Thanks for listening. This is Brian Hurley from Business Performance Improvement. The podcast, Lean Six Sigma Bursts, are short lessons, comments, Q&A, and insights. If you have a question, send your question through the Anchor app, and we might feature you on a future episode. Or contact me at biz-pi.com. In this episode, I share a training presentation I put together around project prioritization matrices. I also put together a video and slide presentation that went over the tool to explain it in a little bit more detail. There's some technical calculations that I explain, so if that's a little difficult to follow, then check out the link in the show notes with the link to the video where you can see the slides and see the template. I'll send a, I'll put a, also put a link for the template as well. If you have questions, please go to the Anchor app where you can submit your question. You can find a link to that also in the show notes. Hope you enjoy. Thanks. So let's talk about the project prioritization matrix. When we're working on a big initiative, let's say climate reduction in a community, we would love to work on all the projects and have a huge impact, but that's just not very feasible and reasonable. We have limited time and resources to be able to work on these projects. People are often already busy and they can't commit to two, three, four, or even more projects. If you have too many projects, it'll overwhelm the teams and your organization, and it'll actually slow down progress. It's better to complete just a few projects completely all the way through with success than to start many projects and only see a little bit of progress or no progress on any of the projects. So how do we figure out which projects are going to be the most beneficial? The project prioritization matrix is a spreadsheet that allows you to capture and prioritize the needs from all the different stakeholders and voices in the community. This is an approach I use in a corporation to take all the different project ideas and select the best ones to pursue first for Six Sigma and Lean initiatives. After identifying the stakeholder needs, you'll be able to prioritize those, since not all the needs are equally important. Secondly, you'll be able to list out the projects and be able to rank them against the criteria to see which projects scored the highest across all the different criteria. At the end, you'll come up with a ranking that will list the projects from highest to lowest based on their score. This also allows you to show the transparency of how projects were selected. So let's take an example of a climate reduction plan. Here are the different stakeholder needs that were identified in the community. The magnitude of carbon emissions reduction, the cost to implement, the availability of the resources, community leadership and support, the impact to low income populations and people of color, alignment to external climate policy, the potential to support jobs and prosperity, the community support, the potential to improve health, the potential to improve local environmental quality, the wide array of stakeholder engagement, and the difficulty of project implementation. You can use a brainstorming and affinity diagram to brainstorm and categorize the different needs. After all the needs are identified, we will rank each of them from 1 to 10, with 10 being the most important and 1 being the least important. In this example, after the scoring was completed, the impact on carbon emissions and the impact to low-income populations and people of color were deemed the most important. After the prioritization was completed, the community identified the impact on carbon emissions as a 10 and the impact to low-income populations and people of color as a 10 being the most important to the community. The alignment to external climate policy and the potential to improve local environmental quality were given lower scores of three, and these are gonna be deemed as less important to the community. So all these needs are important but some needs are more important than others. We encourage you to use all the stakeholders involved to help define the ranking of these criteria. One question that comes up is whether you should be listing problem areas or solutions to implement. If you combine both problems and solutions together, it can be confusing as the solutions already have some implied return on investment or impact and are more exciting to work on. And problems don't have that well-defined yet and those often get left behind in the scoring. When you list just a problem area, that means they're gonna require some investigation into what the best solution will be. This is often how we use Lean and Six Sigma projects, using the DMAIC model to go through and determine what the best solutions will be. This approach is very effective at coming up with some data-driven solutions that align closely to the problem statement. However, most of the time, what we see is solutions These are great ideas that a team has come up with that they think will have an impact on the problem. But that is an assumption, oftentimes without the true estimate or real impact 
being calculated or determined. We must be careful that we may determine that the solution may not work at all, and these are just ideas that don't have merit to them. So if you don't have clear direction on how the solution listed will have a direct impact on the outcome, we would recommend doing more investigation on that. Here's an example of some project ideas that were generated. These ideas were generated from a list of stakeholders. It's recommended that you include a project ID number. The ID number will provide a link back to more details so people can have a clear understanding of what the details are about that project. In the template, there's no limit to how many different project ideas you can list out. Now that we have a list of projects and we have a list of stakeholder needs that have been prioritized, we need to go through and look at each of the projects against each of the needs. We will rank each project using the following scoring. Zero, where you have minimal or no impact. One, if it's low or a small amount. Three, if it's moderate or medium. And nine, if it's very important or a large impact. Whenever you get confused, just remember higher numbers are better. In this example, the team has determined nines for the two categories of energy partnerships and clean energy funding under the column of impact on carbon emissions. That means the team felt that those two projects will have a big impact on reducing carbon emissions. Alternatively, they did not think that residential retrofits will have a big impact on carbon emissions, so they gave it only a one. And on the next column, they also felt that the clean energy funding would have very minimal impact on the cost to implement category. What this means is that a zero is bad. That means that the cost to implement would be very, very large. And so a score of zero would give it a low number and bring it down on the list of importance. This category could be renamed to make it a little easier to understand, such as return on investment or low cost to implement. For each project listed, you must go through and score it either zero, one, three, or nine on each of the stakeholder needs. This should be done with the team and they should agree on the different numbers. This can be done a couple ways. One is to use the team together to all agree on the number, or you could have them vote and then average or the most common answer could be selected. One question that comes up is how come there is no six? Six would be a common answer as a lot of people struggle to figure out whether it's a one, a three, or a nine. So six would be too commonly used and we would not see much segmentation between the different scores. By removing the six, it forces you to decide between a three or a nine. To determine the overall score of each project, we will multiply the ranking of each need times the score for each project, and then add that to the next column. For example, for the project 1D, Operations and Maintenance, the first score was a three, and the ranking for that need was a 10. So we take 10 times three, and we get 30. Then we go to the next column with a priority of seven and a score of nine, and we multiply those two together and we get 63. And that will be added up throughout. So if you look at the entire row for operations and maintenance and you multiply the number of that column by the score and add it to the next column, you get a total score of 354. For each row, we will calculate a total number, which we'll call the priority score, and we'll use that to determine the best potential projects. Again, the higher the score, the more important the project. After all the scoring is complete, sort the priority score column from largest to smallest and identify the top three to five projects. This is where you would want to review the project list with the project teams and stakeholders to make sure that the scoring's made sense and they can see how their particular project scored. You may find some discrepancies or differences that may need a rescore based on how the team was judging that particular project at the time. This is okay. Sometimes the teams start off very meticulous and very careful, and then as the project scoring takes a little bit longer, they get a little bit less structured and a little bit less consistent. And so it's always good to bounce off your scores at the end to make sure everyone was consistent across all the different projects. If there does need to be a rescoring and the team agrees, then that can occur, and then they would, you would rescore the column again. What you're looking for is a top list of projects that has broad appeal across all stakeholders due to the high scores in the most important categories. Next, you will determine how many projects are feasible. Again, we would recommend that you select fewer projects than you'd like in order to prioritize that those get done and get fully supported. If we pick these top three projects, 
we can create a project team from the stakeholder group that can support each of those projects. Each project will get a project plan and rough time schedule in which they should be working on the project, and cadence reviews should be established to review progress as they proceed through the project. The project must also define who the owner or owners are for the project, if there'll be a project manager function, who the leaders are that are supporting the project, any experts on call that may be needed to help with the project, along with project scope. LeanSixSigmaDefinition.com has a list of glossary items about popular process improvement terms, along with a history of Lean and Six Sigma methods, and key influencers like Dr. Edward Stemming, Henry Ford, Taichi Ono, Shigeo Shingo, and many more. You can also learn how to access affordable Lean and Six Sigma training and certification. Visit LeanSixSigmaDefinition.com.